Most beginner fish keepers will dump CO2 into their fish tanks and still see their plants fail. And it's not even their fault. Turns out most tanks don't even need CO2, even the fancy setups. I've tested plenty of tanks over the years and time after time I've seen beginners waste money on CO2 setups that they just don't need. New hobbyists will be scrolling through Instagram and they will see a lush aquascape, instantly assume that CO2 is an absolute necessity to achieve that aquascape. Then they go and spend 200 to 500 bucks on a system that eventually works against them. Doing that before you even fully understand how your tank is working can be stressful on you and very stressful on your fish too. So the first thing you really wanna do is check the plants that you're using first. A lot of plants don't need that added CO2. If you're rocking with crips, java ferns, anubias, you really don't need it. Not every plant wants to be a diva. Some are really chill, low maintenance rock stars. So here's how it works. Plants need carbon to photosynthesize, which means get stronger, grow. But highlight environments and low light environments are vastly different. In a high light environment, the addition of CO2 means your plant can actually uptake more carbon. In a low light environment, the plants that you're giving the ability to uptake that carbon might just be algae and you are just fueling algae growth. Only add CO2 in a tank that you've kept for a little while or you've meticulously planned and you know that you're using slow growing plants or rarer plants, harder to grow plants, or the plants that you're really trying to get added vibrancy out of like red colored plants or greens with certain pink undertones in the leaves. And the underlying key to this whole thing is don't even touch CO2 unless your lighting is strong enough. So if you're rocking a Kmart light or a light that you bought for $50 from your aquarium store, CO2 really isn't the next step in your journey. It's probably upgrading your lights. And if you do decide that CO2 is right for you in your tank, it opens up a new sort of pathway that you can go down. Just remember, correct dosing is the most important part. Too much CO2 and it's going to cause pH fluctuations in your tank overnight, which really stresses your fish. Too little CO2, you're wasting your time, energy, effort, money. So use tools like CO2 indicators and drop checkers. It allows you to know how much CO2 is in your water and how much you're putting into the water on a day by day basis. So if you're using a small tank, start with one drop every two seconds. And if you're using a larger tank, start with one drop per second and make sure you measure, watch for that whole first month. And that's where 80% of beginners struggle. They'll install CO2 and they'll either do dose too much or they'll dose too little and they'll wonder why their plants and fish are struggling. So start with your low maintenance plants, make sure you've got good lighting and low dose CO2 to start. But remember, most tanks will do just fine without the addition of CO2. Your wallet and your fish will thank you. It's only if you're gonna to wanna to create like a beautiful aquascape with carpeting plants and more rare plants, like the overgrown one behind me, that you need that CO2 addition. So I wanna know from you guys, do you actually use CO2 or do you keep it low tech? Let me know what your setup is in the comments below. I read every comment. And if you guys want a step-by-step -step guide on how to install CO2 and dial it in correctly, check out our next video. It will make your tank thrive effortlessly. Not every plant is super high maintenance and sometimes low maintenance tanks are even more beautiful. Remember, keep it chill, keep it green, Subscribe to this account for more videos just like this one.